born free, as free as the wind blows, as free as the grass grows, born free to follow your heart. Live free, and beauty surrounds you. The world still astounds you each time you look at a star. Stay free where no walls divide you. You're free as the roaring tide, so there's no need to hide. Born free, and life is worth living but only worth living cause you're born free mm, stay free where no walls divide you you're free as the roaring tide, so there's no need to hide. Born free, and life is worth living, but only worth living, cause you're born. Thank you. Good morning. Happy Thanksgiving. Turn to somebody and say, I give thanks just being with you this morning. Well, 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 do it like if you mean it. Now, please, don't just copy the words. Put some feeling in it. Tell somebody else. Tell somebody else. Come on. Some of you only only come alive when there's turkey. There's no turkey in here. The lesson today is, you know the lesson. What's the lesson today? Let go. We are where we are in life because of a program that we refuse to let go of. A program built <coughs> from outside information that gave us notions of who we are. Out of what we think we are, life is experienced. Sometimes as I look back on my life, I wish that if they had told me I was a spiritual being full of potential, that I was born free to live freely and not to be clouded by all the negative stuff that go through my mind, I would have been a shining star. Today, the only part of me that shines is my head, but that's okay. <laughs> if we could come to our senses and realize that all those disturbing thoughts that you hold about yourself and others are not true, and all the vengefulness, the hate, the, the, the bitterness, all that divides us from each other, 
not true. That we are all meant to live in a mental state called the Garden of Eden where everything is absolute good. And we could walk with each other, talk with each other, without those prejudging concepts that we have of ourselves and others that separate us. What a wonderful world it would be. What a wonderful life I would have. All these negative thoughts that pass through our minds would be no more. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. You know the words, you'll well, practice it. If our intent is to embrace more of ourselves and to embrace others, we must be willing to sell all that we came into this moment with. We must be willing to give up so that we could embrace more, come to love ourselves more, and let that love shine forth from within us as we interact with others without judgment. That's all we do in life is judge. And Jesus said, it's okay to judge. But if you could learn to judge from the truth that all of us are spiritual beings made in the image likeness of God, therefore every one of us is absolute good. There will be peace on earth. How difficult is that to do? To learn to respect yourself for who you are. Acknowledge yourself for who you are. Welcome yourself for who you are. And do the same to everybody in your midst. How difficult is that? It is only possible if you decide that you want to live the abundant life that Jesus said was possible that you could live. You got to sell. You know, they, they, sometimes these statements that Jesus said are translated so literally that we miss. To sell means to lose ownership. If you rent it or lease it, it is still yours. So, Jesus was emphatic. Go sell all that you have. Go give up possession of all that is unlike the nature of God. And when you do that, you could come and follow me, representing the Christ in me, the perfect idea of God in me. You cannot serve God if you have one iota of bitterness, vengeance, or hate in your mind. Ooh. When the disciples asked Jesus, how often do I forgive? He says, 70 times 7. That means it's ongoing until the process is completed. You do not know how many steps it will take to walk to Young and Blow from here. But you keep going without counting and just practice and do what you need to do until you get there. The idea of goodness is translated in our minds individually. An idea is a transcendent, infinite entity that is perfect. Everyone who entertains the idea, subjectifies it, interprets it according to that person's consciousness. That's why when I tell you I love you, you expect me to hold you and kiss you. And I know you don't want me to kiss you, but that's okay. But love just means to embrace as one. 
from afar, from close, just to accept you in your nature, just as I accept me in my nature, and therefore there is no war, there is no bickering, because whatever I do for you, I do for me. I love my neighbor as I love myself. Forgiveness begins the journey of correcting the false notions that have directed your path to now. In Matthew 7, 1 to 5, Jesus said, Do not judge, for the way in which you judge others, you will be judged. What you think about and you send out comes right back to you. So you can hate me as much as you want. It ain't going to do me nothing, going to do you. When they examine your heart, it will be black. And the wrinkles on your face would make you look miserable. And I would not even have a pucker on my brow. Because what you think about me is none of my business. The evil that men do live after them, they, it's interred. The good is interred. Let me tell you something about negative thinking. Negative thinking cripples you. It's crippling. That means that you, as an instrument of energy, is using all of you in a destructive manner, wasting your energy and destroying you at the same time. You're burning up yourself. Instead of using this energy called life in a constructive manner to produce more, better, better, better all the time. <laughs> to him who hath, more is given. And to him who hath not, more is taken away from her. Let me put this cap back on the mic. Thank you for that. Forgiveness is an inside job. It has nothing to do with me telling you, I have forgiven you. The mere fact I am telling you I forgive you, I believe that you have power over me. And you have no power over me because all power is given unto me. Not to you over me. I don't need to forgive you. I need to change the way I think about you. So when I see you again, I will act differently towards you. I will embrace you. The Son of Man has the power to forgive mistakes. Don't wait on God to forgive you. You Start the process to eliminate the negative thoughts and the feelings you have about me. So you could love me once more because when we were born as kids, we played together. And just because I took your toy at four years of age, you are holding that over my head for 75 years. Release it. Let it go that you could really start to live. You cannot live unless you forgive. You have to forgive in order to live. To live move means to, to move freely and to create infinitely. To be free to be all that you could be without something holding you back. Well, if I do it, Thelma may not like it. So I can't do it. You do what God inside of you instructed you to do so that you can live as an example for others to show them that they could break through that seeming layer that holds them back from their greatness, who they are. Forgiveness. How simple it is. If 
I have something in my hand and you offer me something else, unless I open my hand and lose the grip on what I had, I cannot take in what you're giving me. That's why we teach in order to grow past yourself, you have to learn to be open and receptive. Wherever you are, the past is finished. The Egyptians that were there yesterday are no more. Because before me stands the promised land. If I keep looking back, I'm going to bounce myself against a rock and I'll never get there because I'll get crooked and injured. And many of us are injured because we keep looking back and our gaze is not towards where we want to go. We are always looking back for what's not there but an illusion, something cast in our minds from since our childhood. As Wordsworth says, the child is father of the man, meaning the programs that we have installed in ourselves rule us even in old age. It's time we release ourselves from those programs that have kept us in bondage. You weren't born a slave, so why are you coming to tell me what slavery has done for you? Come and tell me what faith has done for you. Paul says, we are not slaves. We are heirs to Christ, with Christ. <laughs> that anything God is, we are. This is what I should be thinking about. Nobody is holding me captive. The captivity is in my mind. Because I can't think past what they did yesterday. And until I give up yesterday, I cannot experience today. And tomorrow will never come. Because when it comes, it will be yesterday. Yes. Jesus to his disciples, love ye one another. You know, it doesn't take anything to hate. You know how much work it does to, to love Wow, because love God calls for forgiveness. And to forgive is a big job because your mind keeps telling you, oh, how could, did you, there's something wrong with you. How could you? Don't you remember what he did? That beast? Oh. Lord, do, do, don't you remember? But I want to release that from, you can't do that. That's your, that's your ego. The ego does not love, does not like to forgive because it has to remember to stay in that war zone that it has recreated called life. The, the ego thinks that war is living. You need to see things differently. <laughs> Jesus said to his disciples in John 10 and 10, I came. My reason for talking to you today is so that you could experience life and have more of it. That you could do more things with yourself by utilizing the energy that you are in a constructive, progressive manner. You could be more than who you are right now. You are only stuck in your head. Get out of your head and begin to live. I have witnessed in my experience that the people that I didn't like that I hated had more friends than I did. 
And I started to ask myself, you so self-righteous and nobody comes to you. How come those people that you call the devil have more people in their lives than you? And they're happier than you. They don't have any hypertension. They don't suffer from any diseases. And they are always pleasant and mild-mannered. And you stressed out. You complain about everything. You criticize everything. How come? And then Evan said to Evan, Evan, you need, you need to change. You see, this message is not about you. Eh? You're not here. You notice I close my eyes sometimes because it's my story I'm telling to myself. If you want to pick out anything from it, your choice. So don't believe I'm talking about you or to you. I'm trying to convince myself on this Thanksgiving morning that I need to change the interior of me so I could experience more of the blessings that flow outside of me until I change this. My life would be as miserable as it was 40 years ago. Wow. Forgiveness is possible when I accept that I am a spiritual being in the process of becoming. And everything that appears to me is a blessing to help me transcend even more. So I'm never going to be critical. I'm never going to condemn. I'm going to try to bless as God said unto Abraham when he sent him on his journey. Whatever you bless will become a blessing and multiply in your life. Whatever you curse will damn you. So whatever comes into my life, I practice trying to bless it. Although sometimes it gives me some kind of pain inside. I say, thank you, God, for this, because it's going to help me to get past where I am. For yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of semen, death, and destruction, the possibility to live is right here, right now. This is what forgiveness does. It frees you of all that tension and all that bitterness and helps you to realize this is the day that the Lord has made and I'm going to rejoice and live fully in it. And complaining about what they did to me, who did it, why they did it. No. It happened so I could find myself again and live the truth that I am. God is my strength and God is my supply. My God is the resurrection in me that moves me from one place to another. I am the resurrection. I am the life. I am the truth. I create my own experience, and the way to do it is through forgiveness. This ego of ours is so brutal to us. It likes to keep us where we are not supposed to be. When we free ourselves from the power of the ego, things happen. I, I want to read from the book because they accuse me I don't like to do that. I'm doing it for them. <laughs> to begin our journey of surrender, just listen to me. I'll tell you the page. I'll give you all the pages I'm going to read after. You don't mind? You break my concentration. I can't remember what I was talking about because I forgive yes to moment. To begin our journey of surrender, 
it is essential to embrace every living thing as an expression of source energy. Whether this seem like an overstated spiritual insight or a concept we may not have directly experienced, the depth to which this truth is honed determines the course of our misery. Try in every moment, close your eyes, bring all your enemies, all the situations that have been destructive and see them and embrace them as positive energy. Change your mind surrounding the experiences that you had and see them as blessings and see the transformation that will begin right here, right now as you transcend from the level of coarseness, negative thought. Feel the transformation that is taking place as you begin to see everything that comes into your life as a blessing and give thanks. And sing that song, praise God. Thank God that you came into my life. Because I would never have discovered that I have the power to overcome to reach further to the stars, to climb the mountain a little moment because I'm halfway up the mountain and I be strongly. I thank you, B, for coming to help me be more than I could be. I could go on being, but I want to read more. In the heart of surrender, what we perceive as personal criticism from others in our own judgment of somebody else's pain, while it is easy to interpret somebody's judgment of you as an attack, at a deeper glance, we see someone so entrenched in a healing journey that they may not understand that their only recourse for momentary relief is to project their frustrations on others. I, 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 Janet, this is a piece that I was telling you about I gave you, right? Did you bring it today? Yes, she got it. We, we, when we were planning these lessons, I read this and I gave her a copy of it. I said, listen to this. We perceive others from our own internal interpretation of what is true. Hello now. So when you are doing your dance in front of me, I am describing your dance the only way I could because that dance to me represents something that I have described. Wow. So although you are dancing me and inviting me to a party, I see that what, if you don't get out of my face, I'm going to kill you. <laughs> That's your interpretation. Everything that happens to you, you interpret according to your mindset or consciousness. Stop interpreting based on your prejudgment. See things for what they are right there. An opportunity for you to help you change your mind. No, no, this is not, I'm not telling you it's going to be easy. Who oh, say the road will be easy? You know that song? Yeah. Don't sing it. I won't. <laughs> <laughs> and you, you don't get up. <laughs> you, you understand? This is a new way of approaching life. Don't, don't, don't read what people are doing. Let them do what they're doing and bless them. You don't like it, walk away. And don't walk away with them on your mind. Because if they're 150 pounds, you're walking away with 150 pounds that you can't carry. Too heavy. You're not Atlas. <laughs> oh boy, this is heavy, boy. Isn't that one heavy? 
when aligned with source energy, we don't have to be victims of other people's abuse. So because I am always a victor, you could do whatever you want. I am not a victim, so I don't see victim. You could never abuse me. I am incapable of abuse. Because wherever I am, I transpose the energy in front of me as energy to lift me up and build me to a new place so you could do whatever you are. I am not afraid of who can destroy this body, but if you could destroy my mind, then I'll be afraid of you. For who controls your mind controls you. All the great light bringers. Jesus was beaten. Gandhi was beaten. Mandela was beaten. Evan Reed was beaten. <laughs> Richard Whiteman was beaten. Up. If you are not beaten up, you cannot be strong. You have to learn to endure so that you could overcome. Job had to learn to overcome, to learn that I am the resurrection inside of me. And I could move from this place to another place by embracing the energy that comes before me as blessing. You have nothing to do with my life. So you could say, do it, it's not going to affect me because I have power of everything outside of me. You cannot harm me. Since forgiveness begins by remembering each predator, what? Uh -huh. Preceptor. What's that word? Anyhow, is a messenger of divinity. That everyone who or anything that comes into our space is a messenger of goodness. They come to bless us. The essence of forgiveness deepens as we also acknowledge ourselves as source energy dressed up as characters in view. Meaning, the same way I perceive you, you perceive me. So I could come doing good according to me, and you perceive me as being negative. Don't that happen? You see, all of us believe that we are the right ones in God's universe. That what I do is the only thing that should be done. That what I say is the only thing that should be said. But when other people do it, Oh my gosh, you are a criminal just like them. To them, you are a criminal. Don't believe that you are the only right one. Other people are right to be who they are. You need to change your point of view and embrace the whole universe with all your love and instead of holding, holding people in the way you hold. Forgiveness is releasing, releasing that program of arrogance, believing that you are the only right one in the universe and everybody else is wrong. Have you ever felt that way at times? Talk to me, please. I could come down from heaven up here to earth to you. Every one of us, because of the ego, the ego likes to lift itself up, put it on a pinnacle, and believe that it has arrived. Like, that, that, that's the story of, what's his name? The archangel who fell. What was he called? Hello? Not Michael didn't fall. Michael is the one who lifted up. Who's the other one? Who? Huh? Lucifer. Lucifer, you know who it is. Say it. Lucifer is that ego in us 
that lifts itself up and says, I am just like God. Look at me. As bright as the morning star. Come and worship me. Look at me. Hello now. I am the senior. Don't you know who I am? I am the senior minister. When in my presence you kneel down. You're going to fall, Evan. At le unless the Lord builds the house, we labor in vain. The ego seeks recognition. You know, you do a, you do a little thing. You yeah, bring a glass of water for the poor man. And you got to tell you, guess what I did today? <laughs> You're looking... All recognition should come from the act when it's done. Give th praise to God for being able to do what I did because God gave me the energy, the foresight to do it. End of story. Amen. You know, Evan didn't tell me thanks for two years. That's why I don't come back. I'm still waiting. And he has a way with them funny eyes when he look at me. I know he's feeling guilty. <laughs> we make up stories to satisfy the demands of the ego. Just realize that God has given you the energy to be. Just be. Just give. Just be free. And do it in a loving way. Don't look back. As soon as you look back, you're going to end up like Lot's wife, a pillar of no good salt, a big stone that can do nothing, can't even build a house with it. Don't look back for gratitude. Give praise and thanks to the Lord right here, right now, for giving you the energy to live and to experience this beautiful moment and to go forth and experience more moments instead of looking at what I did. You know how much work I did on myself to get here? Who the cares? God bless. <laughs>